This AI agent system that you see in front of me basically takes your input for a product name, product description, and a product image that you have right here. And then it basically gives us the ad copy, the email copy, as well as creative right here for that specific uh, portable coffee maker in this case. As you can see, this is how it looks like right here. Now, obviously, with this font right here, sometimes that happens. So we did here fix that in this particular um, ad creative, as you can see which is a back straightener right here. Obviously this could be even more better with better prompts, which I'm about to show you in this video. So I'm about to break down this very simple workflow so that you can actually go and copy it as well for yourself. As you can see, AI agents, NA10 and AI automation popularity has been rising in the past 12 months. That means this is the best time to learn this in-demand skill. And what better place to learn than joining our school community? Now, our school community is totally different than other communities just because we're doing the advanced AI agent templates every single week. We're adding new courses monthly. We also have direct one-on-one -on -one support. Here you can also see what other people say about us. And not only that, we're giving away free NA10 account for every person that joins here's a little bit of a sneak peek here you can see bonuses we can see also the courses and some ai agent templates as well so if you want join now for the discounted price or you know just wait and learn from this video okay now that we have that out of the way um, we can actually break down the entire workflow right here. So the first thing that we did is we add on form submission. Now on form submission is a node where we're essentially extracting the information from a node. So it's like a form. And as you can see, we have the uh, product information here. We have a product name, which is a text required field. We have a product description, which is also a text here. And we also have a required field. And then we have a product image which is file because we actually have a file right here. This is the product uh, image, it's, it's a JPEG. And we essentially going to be using that for the test, okay? And uh, yeah, we also have that uh, clicked here, multiple files because sometimes products have multiple files. And here we accepted file types are all file types. So we didn't actually add anything in here. Okay, from there, we incorporated an HTTP request node which is essentially a uh is going to be generating an image okay uh, or generating an ad creative now what we're going to be using is we're using the uh, open ai image api now what you want to do is you want to go to your open ai account and first of all in order to even use this open ai image generation api you want to go to your uh general and you want to verify organization, okay? So you need three things. You need to verify organization. You need to add some billing to it. $5 would be enough, 5 to $6. I think 6 is actually minimum. Uh, and this will cost you around $0.30 cents per generation, I think. And then you go to API keys, you generate an API key. So that's what you want to do. Once you have all of that done, you go to the method post. URL is going to be this one because we're going to be... Um, using the image generation API from OpenAI, okay? Then we're going with predefined credential type, OpenAI, and we are adding an API key in here, okay? So adding an API key in here. Once we add that in here, we want to send body. Make sure that it's form data here. Click form data as well. Make sure the name is model. Value is GPT image one because that is the model we're going to be using for our API image generation. NA10 binary file, make sure the name is like this, okay? And then product image in, in input data field, make sure it's product image because this is going to be actually the product image that we are adding from our form. Then we have form data again, size, and this is just for the size. You can mess around with the sizes. Uh, you can also check the um, API documentation from OpenAI to see which sizes they have. This one is by, by far the best one for the Facebook. And then we have form data prompt. And then in the prompt, we actually added an overview here. You're a professional image ad creative agent that will create a Facebook ad image showing the product. And then this is the product name, which is coming from the form. So it's actually coming from the form. So if we go here, if we test this out, let me actually refresh this. And if we test this out right here, if we go here and if we go execute step, 
we can put back straightener, straightener, and then product description is straightening the back, and then product image here is this one, okay? We submit this, okay, we have it here, we have a product image here, as you can see, and then we're going to be executing the step. As you can see, the product name is coming actually from here. So we're just dragging and dropping that in here. It's here, okay? Once this is done, we have a convert to file because right now what we have is once this is done generating, you will see that we have a lot of numbers, a lot of uh, random like words and stuff like that. This is essentially a um, a base64 file and we want to convert that file into a binary file, a, a, an image, right? So in order to return that, we want to use convert to file node and we want to move base64 string to file and we want to also make sure this is done right here. We have data uh, B64 JSON, which is this right here. So we just add that in here. As you can see, once OpenAI generated an image, we don't get an image. We actually get quite a lot of data here, which if we scroll through, it would probably take several days to scroll through, okay? So that's why we have this right here. We just added that right in here and we made data. Once we execute this step, it will take a bit. And as you can see, we'll get essentially the, the image which is a done image, as you can see, straighten your back, improve posture and alleviate back pain. So we have that right here, it looks really clean. From there, we have a Google Drive node. And for the Google Drive node, you will need to actually go here and Google Drive has a new way of authentication. So you will need to go to Google Cloud Console. So if you go to here, Google Cloud Console, you actually want to visit Google Cloud Console and you want to go to, so you want to create a project here. And once you create a project, you want to make sure that you go here, type in Google Drive and go to the Google Drive API, okay? Creating the first project is very easy. So just, I'm going to be skipping that for now. Click manage here. Once you click manage, you want to go to your, um, you want to actually go to your credentials and you want to create new credentials or auth client ID, okay? From there, you want to make sure you have a web app. Here, you can make sure it's named NA10 test or whatever you want. Authorized redirect URLs, you want to go back here, you want to copy this URL and you want to paste it in here, okay? And you want to cre click create. Once you click create, you will get the client ID and client secret. You paste the client ID here, the client secret here, and you can copy also the authorization URL and access token URL. And then you can sign in with Google. Once you sign in with Google, you simply want to go through the uh, verification process. And that's it. You will have it right here, okay? From there, make sure the resource is filed. We're essentially uploading a file, this file right here in Google Drive. And what we want to do is we want to go to schema and we want to go here and we have a product name and you can add that product name here. And this will essentially make sure that file name is product name dot JPEG. Okay. So for example, it will be, um, for example, like straighten, back straightener dot PNG, my drive, and then root folder. You can also choose which folder you want at, you want to add this to. Uh, I didn't choose any folder. I execute this step here. And as you can see, what you will get is you will get a web view link along with other data points, which you will see right here. But this is the link that we want, web view, okay? From there, we also using an OpenAI account here. So we added an OpenAI account here as well, the same one. We're using the resource text, we're messaging the model. And by the way, this is, uh, if you're looking for this, it's essentially an OpenAI, um, oops, OpenAI, like this, OpenAI node. And then in that node, we're essentially adding message a model, GPT-41, and we're using this prompt. So write a catchy and persuading Facebook, Instagram ad copy for the product. And then this is the product name. This product name is coming from our form submission, product name, and then product description is here. Uh, let me actually go here, yeah. And then include hook, benefit, and call to action. Once we execute this, uh, this will be quite fast. I think it should be quite fast and we should get a output here. 
Okay, I was lying. It, it's not that fast. However, make sure the role is user and simplify output. This is very important to put. And then we'll get the ad copy, okay? Now, once you get the ad copy here, uh, obviously we're going to be also writing an email. So currently, as you can see, if this is happening, you simply want to go and restart it, restart the NA10. I will go back here and I will show you the next step. The next step, again, open AI account, message a model, pretty much the same as this one. Just in this one, what we're doing is we're having a different uh, prompt, write a marketing email for the product. Again, we're using the product here uh, from the form submission, which you cannot right now see because the, the NA10 couldn't fetch the open AI. Uh, API and then make it engaging and persuasive. Persuasive. This email should include the subject line, opening hook, value proposition, and call to action. And then make sure here to put the description from the form submission. Simplify output user. Again, pretty much the same. And we're adding that all in our uh, Google Sheet. Again, for the Google Sheet, you simply sign in with Google Sheet within a document, append row, and then we're choosing this sheet right here. And as you can see, we have sheet one, map each column manually. And what we're doing here is we're adding the product name, we're adding the ad copy. So the product name comes from the form, okay? The ad copy is coming from the, uh, here, from OpenAI. The email is coming from uh, this right here node. And the creative URL is coming from uh, Google Drive web view link, okay? That's what you wanna add. Uh, and that's what you have here. As you can see, web view link, we have the content, we have the ad copy, and we have the product name. From there, you simply execute the step and you get all of these populated right here. As you can see, we have back straightener, we have the ad copy, we have the email, and we also have the uh, link here for our, uh, for our image. If we click on it, this is how it looks like right here. Obviously, since we've uh, tested this out and couldn't connect to NA10, that sometimes happens. What you want to do is you want to refresh the workflow and then you simply want to go and uh, yeah, you want to test it again and it will most likely work. So I'll not test it here, uh, but you can get this workflow completely for free in our free community. Also, uh, if you want to check out our premium community for those of you who are eager to learn more about AI agents and how to create even more complex systems like, you know, uh, YouTube, faceless videos, stuff like that, go to our premium group. Uh, you would thank me later. We also have a seven day free trial, which is really great. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you find it useful. We'll see you in the next one.